All right, so what we got here is a giant llama on a bobcat and some Pixar perfect clouds. Look at those suckers. Turtle militia, Gaida. And uh, my cohort keeping me company. So this guy's in two pieces. Let's uh, get him on this flat, move that around. But then we'll get to brushing. And we're going to finish them today. It's the afternoon, got this buffed. I also shimmed these. So what I do is cut a line down through a crack. If it's big enough, I deem worthy to fixing. And then I have these custom cut shims that through trial and error, got to be the perfect thickness of the curve for the blade of the chainsaw. Uh, then you pound it in with Gorilla Glue on it and once it's dry which it is now i will recarve it and once we get the stain and paint on this guy you most likely won't even notice this unless you're really looking for it a few cracks part of the wood game it's gonna happen then i'm gonna move this to the shade to work on this and after that uh, let's see I'm going to split it. So this is actually held together with all thread. In two locations. And then I will clean up these base blocks. After that, we should be pretty close to being ready to get the oil on this. I'll also probably be touching up some things with a v-bit in a die grinder which i will show you right now as promised here we got the v-bit it's made by amana tools i believe this is the 60 degree so what we do with this is you can really cut in nice edges you really gotta have a good handle on it but you can get those undercuts that really make it a lot more convincing and this look nice so i'll be using that on these bigger tufts around the legs and then maybe even potentially right around the edges of the feet so on the hooves all right time to go to time lapse
nice creases. Burn that a little. But it's a great way to get in those valleys. Extremely dangerous, I would say. Way more dangerous than a chainsaw. So, gotta have a good grip on it, but the effects are pretty phenomenal. Okay, here we got llama split. So this is how I constructed it. And we got the through hole. It goes all the way through. Um, carved a little pocket. I might throw a note in there in a Ziploc bag or something. That could be kind of fun. But when I put this together in a competition, I didn't have time. I didn't put any oil on it. So I'm gonna hit this with oil on the inside. So it's sealed, probably let it dry for a bit. It's nice and dry out here right now, so that shouldn't be an issue. And then I gotta clean up the base a little bit more. These two pieces, and then I have these other blocks. They're sitting here, they're already done, so. Same thing, they're a little wet. I'm gonna get oil, all sides of them, so they're sealed. And then when you sand them back together, don't have to worry about rot and same over here. So that way I'll have a really strong base and I'll also put it up on some skids that I will screw to the bottom. So slime will be sitting pretty. Got all these blended in. And so this is what you're looking for. Sometimes the cracks are a little bit bigger, but it's still better than nothing and i think in the future i may make some wedges that i can just shove in there but yeah man it's been a day so yeah it's going well uh next step I'm gonna keep cleaning up those bases and then get some oil on it I got our all thread painted up before we put it back in. Over there, I got the washer and the other nut for this side. So, oiled. And, uh, yeah, so about to do that. Toss those other center pieces in there and then we'll tighten it up. Check it out, got the oil on it, all around the base. <clears throat> Painted the hooves, stained his little ankle cuffs, and oiled the back. So now it's protected at least. If this is all the fur that I can get today, that, that would be okay. So now I'm thinking white, with some airbrushing in the cracks. We'll see, we a lot of airbrushing, but definitely fading this into it. So, probably get some old sheets, drape it over the base as I paint it so it doesn't get all spattery. 
and then airbrush down to there where there's finer detail. But he's a happy llama. There's always a point finishing a carving where you're like, I could just ruin the whole thing. But you do that enough times and then you're like, oh, okay, just keep working it. So it's not perfect. There's a few dry spots, but kind of adds to the flowiness. I think I would like that filled in a little bit more. So this whitewash stain from Verithane, it went on thick. I'm sure you can see that on time lapse. It was nuts. Uh, I wasn't sure if I'd have enough. So a little bit more would have been good. Come back like 10 minutes from now, once it's tacked up a little bit and these pores have filled in. Um, but yeah, that went quick. That sprayer is well worth the money. And now I got a nice protected face. coming with the airbrush airbrush all this and uh it'll start coming out real strong so that'll be exciting that'll be the next step to airbrush after touching up with white paint and it's all oil based i've had oil on this little cow for two years that sat outside this was just rust-oleum over the valve bar uh, cabots oil and no issues so it's a good protective coating So right now I'm thinking the face is too white. You can see where the stain is fading in with the light brown. We're gonna give that a go. I do like the cufflinks. I think those are pretty much where I'm gonna leave them, at least for now. And then I ran out of it, but I had some like off-white chalk paint. I like hitting the back for a little tinge would be good. But, yep, head looks like a possum. That's got a, or a clown. Too much. So that's next. All right, we're closer, and I'm still not convinced. I think it might be because the shadows aren't fully dark, but, and this is a lot of back and forth, but this is how it actually works. You don't just get it right the first try. So, and I took a step back quite a bit as well. It might need to go darker and I might need to bring back some of these white highlights, but I'm going to mull that over and paint the irises in right now. go final product
I'm gonna have to get this out, get a better angle. Nice happy llama, inspired by the llamas of Machu Picchu. A lot of them I looked up did have the dark coloring like this on the face, which I thought would be too dark, but if you saw it before, this is definitely much better. That's all folks, let's go work on something else. All right, I'm back and I'm fixing this base. Oh, I need to do a reveal. All right, we're back. I'm fixing the front and let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, never mind. I can't flip this some. Um...